Hi everyone, we're at CR Space 2024 in the US. I am now on the latest booth with Bill Cowarden, Vice President of Global Ship Design at Gibbs and Cox. Bill, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Xavier. Welcome. Thank you very much for uh, well welcoming me next to your uh, really uh, cool-looking uh, ship models uh, display. So, can you please first uh, introduce uh, Gibbs and Cox? Certainly. So Gibbs & Cox is America's oldest independent naval architecture firm going back over 95 years and we're best known for our work with small and mid-sized naval surface combatants going all the way back before World War II. In fact, since the, the pre-war time, virtually every destroyer and frigate that has been done by the United States Navy has Gibbs & Cox fingerprints on it in some way. Uh, more recently, we have been the design agent uh, for the Navy and then assisting the shipyard and now back with the Navy for the Arleigh Burke class for over 30 years. And today we are the design agent uh, with Think and Terry for the FFG-62. We also have a long history of international work and we're the design agent for an, an allied Navy that's uh, building our international class light frigate. Ranger and her sister ship Mariner are also Gibbs and Cox designs. Uh, they were developed as autonomous platforms by Gibbs back in about 2019 and have recently completed the deployment that you saw them on in, uh, in the Western Pacific. So uh, these are uh, offshore supply vessels that have been modified to be autonomous operations. A very small uh, uh, crew capability up forward if we want to have rider crew on board. And then uh, sort of like a pickup truck work deck. So the ability to carry a wide variety of cargo or mission systems depending on what the Navy may need. How do you typically work on a project? Do you receive a requirement from the end user, uh, the sailors, or here in the US, NAFC, and you adapt the design or work on the design based on those requirements? So it's really all of the above, Xavier. Uh, it depends on what the, what the customer that we're working with. Sometimes uh, the Navy, either our Navy or an international Navy, will come to us with a set of requirements and ask us to start to develop the solution to those sets of requirements. At other times, a shipyard will come to us and ask us to help flesh out the design so that it is able to be produced in their, in their local facility and be successfully delivered to their Navy. So this is one of our concepts that came out of our internal research efforts, and this is our MODEP concept. And I really would like to introduce uh, one of my associates, Dave Zook, who runs our combat systems department, to talk more about the, the MODEP. So David, is uh, MODEP uh, directly, directly related to uh, SecNav Del Toro's uh, priority of uh, reloading uh, vessels at sea? Absolutely. Our target here is to find a solution to help the challenging problem of having capacity issues in the Western Pacific for the not, not enough cells, not enough missiles, not enough to be able to keep the ships in the forward station. So what we've looked at is, is a combining, a fusing of Gibson Cox's real expertise and talents in ship design and naval architecture and our oil, gas and experience. What you're seeing in front of you here is a mobile defense or a depot platform. It could be both. It gives the ability to store weapons inside of a traditional vertical launching system. Those could be picked up vertically and moved to a uh, vertical launching system on another platform. These are very dynamic, very stable platforms capable of sea states up to nine, uh, operationally and mission functions up to sea state four. Uh, they have a dynamic positioning system that allows them to maintain the precision required in the oil and gas industry. And we think that that gives them a very unique, stable, forward basing opportunity that allows you to base and uh, replace uh, requirements and capabilities of, of whatever nature and design you'd like to put on there. Our initial measurements are based on the strike length Mark 41 VLS cells, and based upon the structures of the columns of these platforms, we think we can get up to about 128 missiles per column. That would give you a potential of storing up 512 total missiles. So as a comparison, that's, that's the equivalent of four uh, Aegis current cruisers or five DG-51s. So it brings to bear a lot of potential. It could also host large missiles, uh, large hypersonic-based missiles, uh, or missiles of different size. But we use the Mark 41 as a standard sizing to help uh, establish that, that framework from which we could grow. We are leveraging the technology that's already in place. A lot of the capabilities we're taking are, are systems that are present, were used and, and very viable and, and proven to be effective in the oil and gas industry. We're leveraging our shipbuilding and ship design experience to make those modifications, to make it even more seaworthy, provide the extra energy and power that can support mission, 
and to potentially support the weight and requirements uh, that you would have with a larger mission payload. One of the great advantages of these things is, is how big they are. It gives a the tremendous amounts of stability with most of their weight being below the surface when they're fully ballasted down. Uh, they can operate underway, they can travel from five to eight knots. Uh, that gives them about a range of about 200 nautical miles a day. Uh, that capability allows them to conduct any operations underway while they're in motion or while they're stable uh, alongside or in a calm sea. We think we can conduct most of the operations, including vehicle less reloading at sea, at sea state three or plus. How, how soon can uh, the, the, this concept become reality? Should uh, the SECNAV say, okay, let's go ahead with this? If we got, we got to go ahead right now, we think we get in 24 months, we could turn around a, a platform that's capable of, of leveraging a lot of the existing technology, but has the conversion ability to, to serve in, a, a, in the forward island chains, whether the first or second, could provide logistic support, uh, depot support, or it could support uh, a, a ballistic missile defensive mission. All right, David, that's a really interesting project. I'll, I'll keep a close uh, eye on it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Xavier. I appreciate it.